Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> he played Kruger. And, yes. Uh, if you're a Seinfeld fan and yeah. you know who Kruger is, yeah. Kruger Industrial Smoothing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um on his night job is a satanic uh, cult leader <laughs> with real magic going on. Um he's great in it. Yes. He's always great in everything. Uh, what is Daniel uh Daniel von Bargen? Bargen? B A R G E N. Yeah. So Yeah. He just and everything about this was. He just he just passed away last year. That's sad to hear. I, re- I remember because my Seinfeld fan page was like, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh my gosh, he was uh he was in Malcolm in the Middle too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, <he was. laughs> oh my gosh. I'll see if I can find some of those clips. I'll include He's those. Great. Clips. I'll yeah. see if I can find those, and we'll we'll include that in the show notes and stuff. Yeah. You can find those on the Podomatic page or. Uh, you can get to that also through the Facebook page. Yeah, but. let's post a few of his uh of his better moments. Yeah, well, all of his moments were his better moments though. <laughs> he he was funny, he was scary, he was he could do anything. He was really creepy and that's what I liked about this too because mm-hmm. in the in the movie the cult is just everything you would well, expect a cult to be. Well, so let's just say briefly that when it starts out, it's it's in the past a little ways. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And it shows him, and it shows his cult members, and they're in this old ramshackled house out in the desert somewhere, I guess. Right. And um, they even kind of refer to him as being a Manson-like cult. Yeah. And There's not a lot of people there. It's just like a hand, maybe a dozen or so. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I don't think I could join a cult like that because they're into like self mutilation a little bit and stuff. <laughs> I'm not real big on that. <laughs> no. But no. Um, what happens is that a few of the cult members, I assume, you know, they were members. They mm-hmm. decided to get out. And so they rebel. They decide because he is a, I, I guess I could say a demonic being. Well, he, he is. He's doing real magic. He, I mean, yes. He's being blood magic. He's and doing. He's, yeah. And he's evil. So. Yeah. So they decide. They're he maybe gonna, didn't start that way. Right. But he certainly goes that way. So it starts out where these few members, Swan being one of the members, that's where he's like, you, like you said it, he's totally, it comes off as cowardly and weak, but there's a few moments in the movie where he just does his thing. I mean, he powers in there, it's the, like almost the opening scene, so this isn't any big spoiler, but they're able to bind him, because he's so powerful. Right. Um, Nick, you a, mean? Nick's yeah. so powerful? Yes, yeah. they have a binding spell, and so... And they have they, this, sorry, this cool apparatus okay. that he uses to do it. And I, I want to say that yeah. if I remember this correctly, and I should check my facts, but I just, I don't do that. I that we um, never do. We're terrible. So what I was going to say is I believe that... Uh, you get bogged down in fact. You get so many facts. Have you ever listened to a podcast where all they do is fa- the facts? Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't, my brain can't absorb all the the data like, well, what I was going to say about this is that uh, I want to say Clive Barker was inspired by something in Suspiria. See, and we didn't even say it was a Clive Barker movie. I did. I mentioned it was him in the beginning. Oh, good. Okay. Um, but he was, I think, I want to say he was inspired by uh, something he had seen in Suspiria or one of the other witch okay. movies from, from the past or whatever. But he had this cool thing that he used to to bind Nix yeah. and uh, like arguably kill him. Crazy iron mask clamp thing that goes on over the head and screws on yeah yeah it's kind of cool yeah so they do that and we'll just leave it there flash forward um one of his truest followers Uh, i love butterfield Butterfield. i love butterfield yeah who plays adult i can see who plays young butterfield here but why why are uh, they telling me jay who? trevor uh edmund it was young butterfield and then barry uh del sherman is uh yes the, barry del sherman yes. that's the one we want to concern ourselves with um, not that young butterfield wasn't great because he was yeah but oh man this guy as the current butterfield he's he's been working all these years to figure out how to undo the spell and how to free nick so yeah. flash forward here we are this guy's coming back Everyone's in trouble now. Yes, everybody's so, really in trouble. Yeah, we won't give away much more than that. But now we have to talk about the ever so lovely, beautiful, wonderful Famke Jansen. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say, we hadn't talked about her yet. Last but definitely not least. Yes, we, we love her in this part. Very young in this. Um, but yeah, just, uh, well, I just, I like everything that she's in and stuff. So, but. Yeah. 
again, as I was watching it, I couldn't help but feel certain corny elements to it. But then, well, it was yeah. nineteen. It's a nineteen ninety five horror movie. And, and but I also want to say it's the noir style also. Yeah. Yes. All of those things go together, but well, with that is the good <laughs> horror elements. Yeah. The scary images and right. the the frightening. Yeah. So it just that's the thing because in the middle of all this like chaotic culty magic scary creepy stuff you've got scott bacula as he is a like it said it is he is like a paranormal detective or whatever well, he's a character that in, in uh in uh clive barker's stuff that that has more to do he's fine you mean you find also early in the film you find out that he is continually called to the dark side yeah for well, whatever reason a little yeah. bit like constantine Okay, yeah, because he has dreams and stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's his and he's calling. he's been involved in, you know, uh, right. exorcisms and so on. And right. again, like I said, the the whole same thing with Constantine, whether it be on yeah. the movie or the, the TV show. Right. Um, if you're familiar with the Hellraiser series from DC, um, you know, you're going to kind of see those two kind of overlapping or having similarities, I think. Yeah. But, um, yeah, him. But it's also, like I said, he... To me, I'm not sure why I always equate uh, a side holster, you know, a shoulder holster with being a detective, <laughs> right. Mickey Spillane type, you know, detective right. thing. But. Well, yeah, because in spite of him being already being familiar with Supernatural, not being any stranger to it, he still comes off as just like, you know, this kind of loose cannon um, private investigator for hire that's like he he seems kind of. Um, yeah. I don't know what I don't know the word for it. Okay, is he uh, he's not cavalier totally... or is he <laughs> in his actions or is he? Would you say he's cavalier? Or would you say he's reserved and more? Well, he's still kind of. Does he, he wield his needs... power recklessly, or does no, he need a lot of motivation? I don't he's a skeptic. Think so. He's definitely a skeptic. He's, yeah, I was going to say he still needs a lot of convincing, sure. or he still kind of seems like he doesn't really know what's going on. Okay. I mean, he wasn't like, oh, well, I've seen this before. This is, you know, right. that that wasn't him. He right. was like, he did, oh, my God, what the hell is <laughs> happening here? He did um, his detective work and stuff there, yeah. too. So. Yeah, he still is very much a detective. Yeah. He's following clues. He's talking to people. He's he, looking He's breaking for... into places to right. investigate the places that the police, right. the police won't work at, you know what yeah. I mean, using the method. Same thing as Sherlock Holmes, you know. Right. He's working outside the law to, to help the law, sort of. Yeah. Like. As so, well as the supernatural and stuff, end of it too. Exactly. So I think all of those things come together so good. Well, you in You know this what? Movie. I think he sums it up when he when somebody asks him if he uh, if he is Catholic or whatever, and he says, you know, I've subscribed to all to all faiths at one time or another. Yes. You know, so it's a, a broad range of uh, character there. So I, I enjoyed it, but right. Um, Me too. Would you? What would you give this one? I'd give it a four because I really like it. I give it a four point five. Okay. There were just a couple of things that maybe held it back from saying a five altogether, but uh, definitely a fun watch. If you haven't seen this, if it somehow slipped past you either because you were too young to see it or you had no idea, definitely go back and uh, and check it out. Yes. Because this was again directed by Clive Barker. So right, and it is rated R. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you've got your sex scene. You've got a little. You've got some blood. A little bit of gore, violence. Not gore. Well, I hear gore, and I, I think of guts. Like, why is that? I don't know. It's not gore. It's blood, violence. And this you know? is one of the things, though, that there. I think there were problems again, if I'm remembering this correctly, because I did go through the the commentary some time ago. Yeah. Um, it, there that they couldn't show. And this actually goes back to uh, Sam Raimi doing all the different colors of blood because you can't show red. Right. Um, there was a scene in there where Harry DeMora sees a young boy suffering in an ex- um, a exorcism, and they had to shoot it in black and white, or rather they had to take the color okay. out and put it in black and white to lower the rating or whatever, to get it to pass the, the movie board or whatever. Right. Yeah, you're only allowed to show X... Ex- gallons, gallons of, blood, of red. <laughs> yeah. You so, have to switch it up. Anyhow. Do it in the dark and make it black. Yeah, and, and then it's okay. Then, then yeah. it'll pass them. So. Yeah, there are rules. There yeah. are rules even for so rated So this R. does push, the, push that a little bit. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I gotta say that scene. Um, we won't spoil it for anybody, but um, Swan does quite an exciting stage performance there, involving swords. Yes, and... he does. The Ten of Swords from the uh, yes. tarot deck. So yeah, that's uh, that was something. Yes, it was. Uh, well, let's uh, let's move on and uh, talk about some garbage in, garbage out. You kind of did a spoiler last week, or started to talk about one of the movies that we saw. So let's uh, let's I did talk a little bit more about that now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So you brought up Interstellar last. Yes, I did. This episode. Uh, what did you think about Interstellar? It was sci-fi. <laughs> so I can't miss, in other words. Huh? I really enjoyed it. I did, yeah. too. There were... Um... It had some difficult concepts and things. Yeah. Because I, I overthink it, and I want to see the science. <laughs> it's sci-fi, though. Yeah. Um, Just go with it. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, I think you did too. Um, there are some there every almost every sci-fi movie that tries to deal with well, I almost said string theory. I mean, deal with you know pseudoscience or fringe science or the right. um, that's not neither of those are the words I'm looking for. Um, okay. Uh, what does Sheldon do in Big Bang Theory? Um, oh. eg- theoretical physics, I think, yeah. is the term. But anyhow. You know, they require us to make a leap of faith. And the whole thing about, uh, you know, they show us what it's like inside a tesseract. Right. You know, and that might be hard to see. I'll see if I can post an image of a tesseract and see see if I can do an animated gift on uh, Facebook. I'm not sure if they let you do those. I think they let you do those now. You know, Finn created one of those ones. I, I was going to bring that up, but I thought that might be too obscure. But, yes, uh, you can see what a tesseract is and how it moves. And, you know, it's a box inside a box. It's three-dimensional and moves from. So anyhow, the point was Interstellar was a good movie, not one that you could just skip through. You need to watch it. Uh, I enjoyed everybody in yes. it. The scenes and everything were, were good. Um, lots of fun and worth seeing. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Um, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. What's your reservation, if any? Um, it's missing the, the charm and humor of the first one. Okay. I could see that. For me. For me. Yeah. I loved Alice in Wonderland. I could watch it every day. Uh-huh. I could talk along with it. I could deliver the lines. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. Um so I was super excited to go out and see through the looking glass. Uh-huh. I was trying not to be. <laughs> um but I mean that being said, I really enjoyed it. Well yeah. I was I mean, yeah, I was really it was really enjoyable while I was sitting there watching it. Okay. But I don't think I could watch it every day. <laughs> like the first one. I gotcha. It wasn't, uh, you know, the first one was so, the characters all got a lot of airtime, I guess. Right. Um, this one was, it was different. You know, it was a faster moving story and it didn't focus so much on the characters because you've gotten to know them in the first movie. Right. Um, though you do learn about the white and the red queens um their I relationship was, as sisters i, I was going to mention that as being yeah. one of the things that actually tied interstellar and <laughs> and this together okay well because the white queen uh what's her name <laughs> uh oh yes anne hathaway anne hathaway is in both of those yes yeah i love her Yes, and as her portrayal of the White Queen, I love it. And I miss the creepiness uh-huh. that was in the first movie for yes for, for this one. But when she was uh, putting together that uh, potion there. there. Yes, yes. everything so. was making her gag and stuff. It was like, oh my gosh, that's the best. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you didn't get quite enough of all of that kind of stuff. Okay. But- but it was good, though. Okay. It was good. Uh, another movie that I well, had... What did you... You didn't... I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Everything that you said. I, I, I didn't like it as much. Uh, Sasha Cohen in there was okay, as the t- but just not... Yeah, I wanted a little bit more. I'm not sure exactly what was missing, right. like you said. But it was okay. I, I enjoyed okay. it. Okay. I wanted him to be weirder. The one that uh, I made you watch that maybe you didn't know what to expect, Eastern Promises. 
Eastern Promises. Yeah, what did you think about that?